I have a lot to talk about this week. So get comfortable, get a snack. It's probably gonna be one of my longer updates. Today's a day like any other, but I am changed. I am a mother all in an instant. And who I was has disappeared. There's a really big spider on the ground right there. So if I keep looking down, it's because I need to keep an eye on him because it's terrifying. <laughs> so today I am 29 weeks. I'm going to be doing my 28 week update for you guys. Um, I have a lot to talk about this week, so get comfortable, get a snack. It's probably going to be one of my longer updates, but jumping right in on weight gain. This morning I weigh about the same that I did last week, so that puts me at 13 pounds gained. Nothing changed in the last week, um, so 13 pounds gained for this pregnancy so far. In terms of cravings and inversions, Nothing too crazy. Um, the only one I can think of is I really want french fries. And that kind of just happened today. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's kind of the same things. I really still like cereal a lot. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm more of like a savory, salty person in general. So I haven't really been craving a whole lot of sweets. The other night, I really wanted a milkshake. And so I made a milkshake and it was awesome. But that doesn't happen very often to me. It's more like french fries. <laughs> um, for symptoms, nothing really new. I have the swelling issues that are still ongoing. A little bit of problems sleeping. But I feel like I'm kind of getting used to sleeping pregnant. So I'm kind of getting the swing of it a little bit. Um, I have a pretty good pregnancy pillow, so I've been using that, and I think I'm getting a little bit better at just, like, finding a comfortable spot with it. So that's been good. But for my swelling, I decided that I wanted to try the compression stockings because nothing else has worked so far. So there's specific ones that are for maternity, and they don't have toes on them so you can wear them with sandals which is really nice they go from like just below your toe line all the way up to your knee I can link those below I got them on Amazon and I have definitely noticed a difference I wouldn't say that my feet have gone completely back to where they were before but it's definitely drastically improved when I wear them so I'm trying to wear them pretty much every day so that is really exciting to know that I have a way to make it a little bit better at least when I need to um, but other than that symptoms pretty much in line with last week um, for exciting things that happened nothing really too exciting but I do have something that I wanted to update you guys on that happened this week um, on this past Tuesday a couple days ago I went to my 28 week doctor's appointment and in addition to the doctor's appointment, I had my three-hour glucose test. So if you know what that is, they are not fun and they take a long time. So I went there to my initial doctor's appointment. Everything looked great. Great blood pressure still, which is one of the main things that I was concerned about. But everything looks good there. And then I started the three-hour glucose. So the way it works is you take your initial blood draw. They give you a drink that is pretty much straight sugar to drink. And then an hour afterwards, they'll do your first, like, kind of test. Um, so it'd be your second blood draw, but your first, like, I guess, measurement of how you're reacting. And then two hours later um, from the initial time, they'll do your two hour and then your three hour. So you're there for a total of three hours, and it's a total of four blood draws. I also had a vaccine that day, so I was stuck five times by needles. <laughs> it was not fun. Um, but what was interesting is they have to stick you two times in each arm. So I didn't really think about it, but because you're pregnant, especially since I'm farther in my pregnancy now, um, I had blood draws when I was 
you know, my first trimester, second trimester. But now that I'm farther in my pregnancy, my blood, I don't know if it's just like how much blood or like how much it's pumping through my body has increased. So when they did the second puncture, it kind of made the hole even bigger and I was bleeding a ton and it took a while to get it to stop. So I never had an issue like that before when I do blood draws. So I thought that was interesting, like a, just a weird pregnancy symptom that you don't notice because you're not bleeding all the time. Um, and I don't, I haven't cut myself like bad during this pregnancy, so I never really noticed, but definitely bled a lot more than I think I should have. <laughs> um, but I got the results back the next day, because usually they'll call you the next day with your four different numbers. Pretty much, if you fail one of them, you're okay. But if you fail two out of the four or more, then that means that there is definitely something wrong and either they'll do additional testing or they'll just say you have gestational diabetes. So I got my numbers back and I passed all four. So that was really awesome. Not even borderline. Um, definitely no issues there. So I'm really, really glad about that. And then the second thing that I wanted to update you guys on that's kind of a unique topic this week is going into the third trimester I have some goals some things that I want to do hopefully every day if I can so one of the things is being more physically active um, just to stay like healthy and mobile and get the baby in a good position if I can so I'm trying to go on the treadmill Monday through Friday if I have time like at least 10 minutes just to kind of get moving because I sit in a desk all day and it is painful for me to walk for an extended period of time. Um, I get like some cramping that I mentioned earlier, but if I do five, 10 minutes, it's not, it's not bad. That's kind of at the point where it starts to get painful and then I can stop. Um, but I feel like just doing that would be good for me just to stay a little bit mobile. In addition to that, I also want to just do some stretches involving uh, yoga ball, um, even something as simple as like getting on all fours or sitting um, like butterfly style on the floor. Um, just those kind of things to just kind of like stretch out your legs. Um, and also just getting in that like forward position where you're like either leaning or on all fours is a good position for the baby in terms of positioning for labor. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, if you are going to a natural birthing center, a lot of times they'll have some things that will like fail you out of the program. So one of the things is if the baby is in a bad position when you are going into labor, that makes it more dangerous. So they don't want to go through the labor and delivery process if it's gonna be more dangerous than just a generic pregnancy. And so they will move me out of the natural birthing center into just the regular birthing rooms, which it's not a big deal, but I would like to avoid that if I can. So I'm trying to do anything I can to put the baby in a good position. In addition to that, I plan on doing perennial massages. I think that's how you say it. But pretty much it's a massage that either you do or your partner can do. Um, and usually you do it like the last couple weeks of pregnancy. You don't do it through the whole third trimester, but when it gets closer, Something that I want to do every day is this type of massaging that pretty much makes it so that, especially like, I think it's a bigger deal if it's your first pregnancy, it helps you so that you don't tear as bad. Um, I'm going to do a couple other things in my labor process or delivery process that will also try to minimize tearing, but one of the things is kind of this massage um, just to kind of get the skin a little bit more stretched out down there. So. I'm going to talk about my birth plan later and I can go into detail on some of the things that will help me on my birth plan for not tearing, but that's one of the ways that I can possibly ahead of time prepare to tear less. That is the goal. Um, and then the last thing on my wish list or my to-do list for the third trimester, I'm reading The Calm Birth Method and that book, I've read most of it already, I'm probably going to read it a couple times, 
it's amazing in terms of getting your mind in the right place for labor because labor is not something that's unnatural you are not sick and you shouldn't fight your body through it you should work with your body so that's what I'm reading I'm trying to just really get in the mindset and be mentally prepared to for what I can expect but also just you know kind of things that I want to tell myself and how I want to feel so that is also something that I'm really focusing on this last trimester so that is it for my goals my plans for this trimester in addition to buying all the last minute things that I need for the nursery and for the baby but that is it for my 28 week update it's crazy that we're already doing the 28 week update the baby weighs probably at this point between two two and a half pounds maybe even more so that's just amazing to me if you think about kind of where we started two pounds seems huge so it's really exciting also something to mention I mentioned before the first um, viability point so 28 weeks is the second viability point so pretty much from here on out the baby has a really good chance of survival so that's really exciting whatever happens here going forward there's a really good chance that the baby is going to be okay and he's gonna do well so that's really exciting and makes me feel a lot better because obviously the first couple trimesters you're just nervous all the time so this last trimester can be about me just really focusing on being healthy and happy and mentally prepared and focused for labor and delivery. So that's what I am working on. So I'll end this video with a bump shot for you guys. Today's a day like any 